Happy New Year. Cheers. <laughs> Here's to 2021 being a damn sight better than 2020. Um, I am having an Elvis juice this evening. Uh, and this was a beer that a very lovely viewer bought me. Um, so Stacey, if you're watching, thank you very much. Um, Stacey apparently knows one of my friends who knows where I live uh, and dropped a case of beer off for me as a thank you for these tutorials. So that was an absolutely lovely New Year surprise. Uh, and a couple of other people donated as well on uh, around Christmas to my PayPal account. So that was lovely as well. So a big thank you to uh, those kind people. Um, and I hope you're all doing OK. Uh, I'm not doing too well at the moment. I've kind of injured my shoulder, my left shoulder. I'm not quite sure uh, what's going on. I've got a physio appointment um, next week. So uh, I can't actually play at the minute, which is driving me mad. Um, I can't really use my, my left arm very much because it aggravates it. Uh, but I thought that would give me a good excuse to do um, a little right hand technique with you. Um, and it's a technique that I'm not very good at. Um, I'm sure I've mentioned it before. Um, so I am absolutely no expert on this and you can uh, ask other tutors and watch other things uh, to maybe learn a bit more. But I can get you started off um, and kind of show you the basics. So we're gonna look at drop thumbing. And this kind of leads on from uh, the double thumbing um, tutorial that I did a little while ago. So in the double thumbing one, if you remember, you put in uh, the kind of fifth string in between each beat. So um, rather than just a one and a, it might be da, 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 da. So we're putting that extra drone string uh, note in there. Instead of like a hammer on or a pull off, it gives you that extra eighth note um, after that first strike. So it might be that you, you know, if you just start on that first string and then just pluck the fifth string in between, that is double thumbing. So we did that a little bit in Old Joe Clark, if you did that tutorial with me, um, which was the last one I think I uploaded on here. Um, so you could go back and have a look at that if not. Um, but that, that idea of double thumbing, we were kind of looking at always keeping the thumb up on that fifth string on that one. Whereas with drop thumbing, as the name suggests, you drop your thumb down onto some of the other strings. Okay, so you're not it's not living up there on the fifth string anymore, which is pretty much what it's done the whole time um, that I've been teaching any of these tutorials. Um, it's a funny one, drop thumb. A lot of players um, sort of shy away from it. They find it quite hard. Um, that would be me included. But I think the only reason I find it hard is because I didn't learn it quick enough in terms of I didn't learn it early on when I was learning the banjo. And I think I've seen a few other people say the same thing, that if you come to it after a few years of doing more the bum ditty uh, chord based stuff um, and using hammer ons and pull offs to give you those extra eighth notes to suddenly start dropping your thumb into the equation uh, is, is quite hard. It's like training your brain again. And I find it quite difficult. The other reason, though, that I don't use it much um, isn't really to do with difficulty, but it's to do with style. So um, <laughs> if you if you listen to like different players, you'll hear a different kind of groove going on, a different kind of style um, with everybody. And that's cool. You know, that's what you want. You don't want everything to sound the same. Um, but people who use a lot of drop thumb tend to be putting in a lot of notes because it's a notey style and um, the whole reason you're doing it is to fill in some extra notes and to get some melody notes in there that you might not be able to do just by kind of holding chord shapes and doing a few hammer-ons and pull-offs okay so quite often you'll hear people playing with drop thumb and it'll be uh, what I call, and I don't mean this in a derogatory way, um, but I call it plinky plonky style <laughs> because um, it is more plinky plonky. It's it's more noty and it's um, a bit of a, uh, maybe like a bit more of an old timey spooky sound quite often, um, which is nice in some of the kind of mountain minor keys and stuff. It sounds gorgeous. Um, but people who want to play like note for note, so replicating fiddle tunes on the banjo, Drop thumb's really handy because it gives you access to a lot more notes. 
Now my style of playing is not like that. I don't play to play old tunes. I know I've done a few tutorials with tunes, uh, but that's, you know, that they're just the ones that I know and I thought would help beginners. Um, that's about as far as I go. I don't actually know many more tunes than what I've already put on here. Um, I'm not really, uh, you know, a tune player, I suppose. Um, I'm a songwriter and I find for songs that using um, more rhythms and uh, you know really uh, capitalizing on the chords and what you can do uh, with the left hand um, and keeping this hand a bit more of a, a strum and a groove that's the style that I play so that's another reason I don't use drop thumb that much however having said all of that I really wish I had learned it earlier so We'll go through um, the sort of basics and you can just have a go and then, you know, you might start to put it into stuff um, and you might look at other forms of playing, look up uh, melodic claw hammer. So a lot of um, what I was talking about there, uh, players that try and replicate tunes kind of more more note for note um is called melodic claw hammer because you're putting in a lot more melody notes you know so that's what it means um and you and you're using a bit less of the strum having said that you it doesn't mean you abandon the strum you can combine it uh you can do the basic frailing strum the bum ditty and then throw in drop thumb as well all in the same tune you know that's uh that's cool you know a lot of people do that so anyway i'm rambling on um but so we've got the double thumb in okay so what you can try and do is instead of kind of just keeping your thumb on that that drone string on the fifth string you can strike the first string with the back of the nail and do your, your fifth string like we've done then you could strike the first string again with your middle finger but drop your thumb onto the second string so it would be a see that all right i'm using a different banjo tonight by the way lots of you might notice that uh, this is my old gibson look at that from the 1920s i don't use this one much because it comes out of tune all the time uh, it's not easy to play with really um it's uh, i use it more for decoration and sentimental value um but it's quite light which is good when you've got a bad shoulder so uh first string fifth string first string drop your thumb to the second so first string with your middle finger, drone, first string, drop your thumb onto the second string. Okay, so just have a go at that a few times. First, first, but drop your thumb. way around starting with um dropping your thumb onto the second string uh, after the first note so strike the first drop your thumb to the second first drone that's probably more likely the way around it would be in a tune so dropping your thumb after the first strike one and two and or <laughs> yeah yeah one and two and three and four yeah i'm counting right is getting to me one and two and three and four and now that in itself might feel really 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 weird to start with uh, it still feels weird to me even though i have been trying it uh, on and off for a long time so your drop thumb is is replacing like i say an eighth note so where we strike if you did want that note as your next little melody note, that's quite hard to do with your left hand. I'm not using my left hand today, but even if I was, to go from that note to that note, I can't do it with a hammer on really, because I'm going down, I'm dropping in sound. I could potentially do it with a pull off. So I could fret a string and pull it off and get the same effect. Um, but you can't always do that. So drop thumb does allow you to pick out notes that you might not be able to always access um, by just doing the, the the basic frailing strum. Okay, so and you can. 
can imagine as you get faster at it, it can start to sound a bit more like rolls, you know, like pickers would do, like bluegrass banjo, where you kind of picking more upwards, you know, and, and, and running through the strings. Um, because obviously I'm demonstrating there where I'm always striking the first string with my middle finger. Um, but as you get used to that little pattern, that exercise, doing first, second, first, fifth, first, second, first, fifth, after that, you could try striking a different note to begin with. So maybe you try striking the second, dropping your thumb onto the third, and then going up to the first and the fifth. So it might be second, third, first, fifth, second, third, first, fifth. it starts to be a bit more like a roll so if you wanted a sound that's much more like I say I call it plinky plonky because it, it, it is more plinky plonky it's got more notes in it um you know this style can be really nice to stick in there and um, and like I say it's not to say that you have to discard the strum so it might be that you do like your, your normal uh one and a two and three and you know so you're dropping the thumb as a little you know the next little bar but you, you've done a strum first or you might finish it with a strum you know you might be doing a tune where you've done some notes and you can start to combine it now I'm not <laughs> it's sounding quite boring because I'm not putting in any notes because I can't fret up the neck at the moment with this shoulder um, but you can imagine if you're if you're doing some more fancy things on the neck as well you're putting in chords you might even throw in hammer-ons and pull-offs as well as doing some drop thumb it suddenly opens up a lot more um like I say potential for notes so for filling in like extra bits or finding a melody note that isn't just going to be you know in the chord as you do your normal strike strum thumb so it does open up a lot more options it is a little bit tricky to to um get that thumb kind of in the right place and finding the right string and again just like anything else that's just going to take practice okay so um some people find it helps rather than um being kind of away from the banjo and kind of being dainty and kind of you know uh, sort of just gentle they kind of really come in I'm exaggerating that a little bit but if you kind of throw your thumb kind of behind the string so you've got quite a definite sort of pull off action once it's in there and then it pulls it away and um, some people find that helps and um, the other thing is as you strike in that first string remember just like the frailing strum where we're going one and uh, or one two and if we're being properly technical just like we would want our thumb to land after the strum ready to do the final bit of the frailing strum you know the, the, want that thumb there to be faster so it lands on the string so just the same as that think about that when you're doing your drop thumb in as well so as you hit whatever string it is that that middle finger or index finger if you play with your index finger but if your middle finger's striking a string your thumb kind of wants to be ready on whatever string you've decided to drop it to it kind of needs to be ready straight away to pluck that string so what you don't want is a strike and your thumb out here so it's got to come back in and find the string because you ain't got time for that it's an eighth note it's coming in fast after you know after you've done your strike the thumb is going to come in i'm hitting the third string by the way if you're sort of trying to like make the same sound as me at the moment so i'm hitting the first string with my middle finger and then the third string when i'm dropping my thumb so so i'm trying to make sure my thumb's landing on that third string kind of at the same time as i'm striking the first one so it's ready to pull it off and make that sound okay 
So I think that's probably about as much as I want to tell you at the moment. Um, there's not much more to it, to be honest, but obviously doing this in isolation may not make as much sense as if we were putting it into a tune. Um, but like I say, other tutors can maybe help you with that. There'll be there'll be loads of stuff on here on YouTube where, you know, people use drop thumb. So watch a few different players, you know, watch different um Fraylin Clawhammer players. Uh just have a look because you'll you'll notice that in some tunes people are dropping dropping the thumb. Um, sometimes it's hard to tell when you're watching people play because um, they might be going so fast like I'm keeping my thumb there on the on the fifth string but because it kind of bends and comes in and out you know watching a fast video that might look as if I'm dropping my thumb um, so it is sometimes a little bit hard to tell but I would say you can usually tell because it sounds like more of a melody note it sounds like more of a single note so quite often you'll lose a bit of that that strum that you hear you know if you if you're keeping it more chord based and doing the basic frailing strum a lot so i hope that kind of gives you a brief introduction to drop thumb as an exercise i would just do that first string second string first string fifth try that over and over you know and then try the third string start coming in with your middle finger you know and it might be going second third first fifth and just by doing that pattern if I was uh, using this left hand and doing fretting up here and making different notes on the fretboard you can imagine that all of a sudden all those quick four notes together could make you know quite a, a notey little uh, sound so like I say it, it throws open some more options for you for when you're playing um, so have a go and um, it means yeah you're training this hand to do something else the good news is that's pretty much you know the most advanced thing that this hand is going to do you know your basic frailing strum you now know double thumbing you introduce drop thumbing once you've got all that you know that you've got everything really you know um but it just takes you know like anything time to go over it and get it feeling right um when my shoulder's a bit better hopefully um i'll do a couple there is um the the couple of tunes i, I would use a drop thumb in that I know and haven't put on here yet uh, are a couple of um, ones in like G modal, so the nice kind of sawmill tuning, um, and they use quite a nice little drop thumb lick uh, sometimes. So yeah, we'll, we can we can put it into a tune, so it makes a bit more sense. Um, but yeah, don't want you to worry about it too much for now if you're a beginner. But I know there's now a few people watching um, that are a bit more, you know, wanting the next stage of stuff. So this is something that you can practice and then, like I say, have a look around at other videos and um, yeah, learn some stuff that might incorporate that drop thumb in. And uh, yeah, thanks again for the beer, Stacey. And uh, one thing that you could do, I think I mentioned it on the last video, um, but, you know, these videos are being put up for free. Um, but one thing you can do for free for me in return uh, would be to like all the Banjo Gen stuff. Um, it just helps with um, stuff when you're a, a sort of original singer songwriter getting booked for things so yeah if you can like my facebook instagram spotify other youtube channel etc etc you know the score uh, that'd be cool and i will see you next time uh, i don't know how long it'll be depends how this shoulder goes um but yeah hopefully not too not too distant future <laughs> all right see you later